thank you for your Holy Spirit that teaches us, that guides us, that leads us, that speaks to us, Lord God. We thank you, Father. We thank you that we don't have to walk alone, Lord God. We thank you that we don't have to walk in the wilderness and wonder where we're going. That we just keep our eyes on you and we can see. We can see where we're going. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for sending your Son to die so that we can be set free. Thank you for the finished work of the cross that is already done. It's already done. It's already ours. Thank you, Father.
You're walking in the darkness. As I started to give up my will and let him have his will in my life, it wasn't very long and I could see in amazement what he was doing in my life. How quickly things were changing and how much better my life was. The chaos, the disorder was starting to come into line. The things that had been robbed and taken from me, that, that, that constant um, struggling because things just keep, kept getting ripped away from me. They stopped getting ripped away from me. I started to have solid ground to stand on. I wasn't it wasn't sinking ground anymore. It wasn't like trying to reach like for my life. I could stand on stable ground. It's a bitter sweet place to be to be in surrender. And I say it's a bitter sweet place to be because <clears throat> it's unchartered territory. Unchartered territory is a bit scary. It's scary because you don't know what's around that corner. You don't know what cliff there might be. You don't know what valley there might be. You don't know what mountain you might have to face. So it's, it's, it's scary. But that's the place where you're at the end of yourself and you put your faith in him. Because he's already been there. He already knows the way. He already knows that valley. He already knows that mountain. He already knows how to get through the darkness. But how will you ever get to explore that unchartered territory if you're the one that's in control? If you're in control, you're always going where it's, it's safe or where you think, you think you know the way. But you were going in circles, you were going in circles and you were, you were heading into, into darkness. It takes faith to go into the land of the unknown. It's impossible to please him without faith. If you do not believe and have faith and walk by faith, yeah, it's impossible to please him. Um, I was going to say something else, I don't remember what it was, but those who walk by, by the flesh, they satisfy the flesh, and those who walk by the Spirit satisfy the Spirit. And as you walk by the Spirit, He leads you. He leads you into greater glory. He leads you into the promised land. He leads you into paradise. And I'm not talking about someday when you get to heaven. I'm talking about right now. You can walk in the promised land right now. There are still giants. There was still giants in the promised land. Okay? He didn't get them to the promised land and say, you know, he, actually I should say this, he didn't promise that there wouldn't be giants in the promised land. There was giants in the promised land, but you, but you were given everything you needed to defeat the
the giants in the promised land. You see, when I was at that place where I was staring death in the face, I didn't have the armor. I didn't have what I needed to defeat the enemy. If I did, I wouldn't have been staring death in the face. I wouldn't have been at a place where death was on my doorstep. I would have been walking victoriously. But it was when I finally gave up my will and surrendered my will to him. Now, I had him as my front guard and my rear guard. And I could walk in the promised land. I could walk and defeat an enemy or a giant if one shows up. So in this world, you're going to have trials and you're going to have tribulations. You're going to have giants. Evil is going to come at you, but it cannot prosper. Without Christ, it was prospering in my life. I know that it prospers in your life without Christ. I know that. He said, this is the way. Walk ye in it. His way. Walk in his way. Not your way. Your way, the path is wide. It leads to death. Many take it. His way is narrow. And it leads to life. He says, follow me. Follow me, he says. As I started following him and getting into the word and my life started turning around, it was, it was very clear to me that God was saving me. He was my saving grace. Others might not have known as they were looking in because it might have not looked different yet. But I knew that I knew that he was turning things around, that he was changing things. I knew that the things were come, that, that used to come against me were not prospering anymore. From the outside looking in, it might have looked might have looked a little bit the same to other people, but I knew what was changing, and I thanked God every day for life, and I didn't want to go back to that place of death anymore. So I kept following Him and following Him and following Him. I had some bumps. You know, I had I had some valleys, then I'd come up and I'd have a valley again. But but even that was better than that than the grave. Even that was better because I would have some hope. I'm gonna go down again, but then I'd have some hope <laughs> again. You know what I mean? Amen. The Bible says. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is like a tree of life. When I was back in that place, that valley of dead, dry bones, I had no hope. I had nothing to hang on to. But a longing fulfilled was a tree of life. All of a sudden, I was getting fulfillment. I could see light where I couldn't see light before. I'm gonna tell you a story. Uh, in that place where I was, where I was in rebellion and defiance and doing life my own way, which brought me to that place of death, it brought other consequences. And the other consequences was, I was cut out of 
inheritance. And I'm not talking about heavenly inheritance right now. I'm talking about earthly inheritance. I was an only child of the people that raised me. Not my biological parents, okay? But the people that raised me. And I was, I was cut out of that inheritance because of my lifestyle, because of my choices. And I wasn't even told that I was cut out. It, it was, it was uh, done without me knowing about it, okay? When I found out, I was deeply, deeply hurt. But, but I, I searched inside and I, I looked in the mirror and I was honest with myself. I took accountability for my choices. I said that I know why I was cut off. I understand why I was cut off. It was because of my choices. And I started praying to God, uh, first of all, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me for walking a certain way. Um, forgive me for what, I, for what I didn't know. Forgive me for my sins, Lord. And... That, that um, being cut off from my, from my inheritance, I, uh, I have to open up the story a little bit more. When I was at that place where I was crying out to God, I, I had moved back to the parents that raised me. So now I'm in this place, and I find out that I was cut off, okay? So... But I'm there to heal. I'm there to, to get back on my feet. But I'm also there to help them. And, and I just cried out one day and I said, God, if I'm here and I'm going to help them, what's going to happen to me when, you know, they're old and they're, they're going to die someday. And when they die, Lord God, what's, what's going to happen to me? Am I going to be standing on a... Am I going to be standing on a street corner with my suitcase? Because all, that's, all that's, that's all that's been left because of my choices in life, Lord God. I believed I deserved it because of my choices. Okay? But I, at the same time, was crying out to the Father to uh, help me, to show me, to save me if he could, if he would, I should say. I already know he could. But I didn't, I didn't know what that was going to look like. All I know is that I was praying and asking him and, and actually, you know, pleading with him. Lord God, I, I don't want to be homeless someday. And I actually shared with him, <laughs> touches me, I actually shared with him the desires of my heart. I said, Lord God, I don't want to be a wanderer anymore. I don't want to be an orphan anymore. I don't want to be, I used to call myself a gypsy. I said, I don't want to be a gypsy anymore. I don't want to be going and going and going and never having a home. I said, Lord, please, please secure this place for me. Now, how could that be? How could that even happen? Because I was already cut out. And as far as from, through my parents' eyes, I was not responsible enough to have that blessing, to have that inheritance. But I was praying, 
And so I just gave him, I, I cried out the desire of my heart and the desire of my heart was to have a secure place, whatever that was. But I, I, I actually said, I want this place, Lord God. I want this place to be my home, my sanctuary, my safe place. And this is what happened. I was sitting in my room upstairs. I call it the upper room because that's where I did all my praying and all my reading the words. So I called it the upper room. And and I had my eyes closed when I was crying out to him. And then I opened my eyes. And when I opened my eyes, the walls of my room were not there. And angels were wingtip to wingtip around the whole property. Wingtip to wingtip. And they were taller than the house. They were about 15 feet off the ground and they were about 15 feet high. And they were 15 to 15 feet wide. How do I know that? I don't know. But that's what I estimated it, their height and their width to be. And the one that was right in front of me had a sash and I believed that to be Jesus. And that was the one who was releasing peace and releasing a promise. I didn't hear anything except for, I heard, I have it written down. It's been a long time since I told this story. But uh, I think it was peace be still. You're secure. It's okay. It was very similar to that. Okay? That was it. Very short. Um, I could see right through them. They were like iridescent. Kind of like, kind of like smoke. Mm -hmm kind of like smoke, but it wasn't smoky. It was like looking through like cellophane paper or something. It was, yeah, they, yeah, there was, there was a presence and I could see them. So anyways, uh, they released the promise and uh, then I looked back at my room and the walls were back, but I knew that I knew in that moment that I was secure and that my prayers have been had been answered. I just knew. I didn't know what that was going to look like. I didn't know what the future had to bring. I had no idea. But I had hope again. I had joy. I had peace. And I walked with my chin up. <laughs> And I knew that I knew that I knew that I had nothing to worry about as far as a roof over my head again. That it was secured. Okay? So, it wasn't long after that. That was February. February of 2016 that that happened. And uh, so what had been taken from me, oh, I'm not going to get ahead of this story. That was February 2015, okay? So fast forward to uh, June of 2017, okay? Is that a year and a half later? About? So, my father, who was dying, on his deathbed, I was having a conversation with him. And I mentioned something about 
the house. And he said to me, he wanted that house to be mine. And long story short, the next day, he was signing a piece of paper that brought my inheritance back to me. Yay. <laughs> See what God did? <laughs> See what God did? Mm -hmm. And without telling all the details, other things were returned to me. So it was a turnaround. And it was a suddenly. And God kept his promise. He kept his promise because I gave up my way. I gave up my will. And so the things that were taken from me, he was returning. And he was returning them in abundance. The scripture says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God comes to give life and life abundantly. And whatever the devil meant for evil, God will turn around for good. And he will return to you in abundance what the devil stole away. So when you get out of the way, when you lay your pride down, when you lay your will down, And you say, not by my will, but by your will, Father. That's the place where you've given him permission to have his way in your life. And his way is perfect. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome. And it's beautiful. And it's abundant. And it's beyond your imagination. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. No heart knows the great and wonderful things that, that God has for us. And when we're so busy doing it our way, we're in his way. And he won't go against your will. He's a gentleman. <laughs> Says, you want that? Go ahead. You let me know. <laughs> you let me know when you want me to do it. You want promotion, you want to be raised up. You want more. Follow him. Lay your life down. Surrender things to him. It's a step by step. If you want to be at the head of the table, you get positioned at the head of the table. You don't put yourself at the head of the table. You let the master put you there. When he puts you there, nobody can take you out. That's your position. If you put yourself there, you will be moved. You'll be demoted. You'll be taken out. When the master puts you at the head of the table, it's a secure position. Don't despise humble beginnings. You think you're all that. You think you can just Go from here to there. You wouldn't even be able to uh, you the humble beginnings teach you to navigate. And without it, you would be uh, you would be set up to fail. You gotta go through the grades. You gotta go through kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade to get to to get to to be a senior in high school. You can't 
can't go from kindergarten to being a senior in high school. You got to take the steps. You wouldn't even be able to handle it if you got put there. Don't despise humble beginnings. And you thank God for the training. You can't be put on the top of Victory Mountain. You can't be, you can't just be put there. Like forget it, I'm not doing this climb. I'm not doing this climb. I'm gonna find an easier way to get there. Without the climb, you wouldn't have built the strength. You wouldn't have built the strength because the, how did I say this? Um, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to withstand the elements of the promotion. Do you know on a mountain, if you went from the top to the bottom, like like right now, you would pass out from the elevation. You wouldn't be able to withstand it. You would get weak. You have to build the muscles to get there. People want to just, they just want to jump in and they want to be like, I'm going to do this thing. But you didn't get promoted. You didn't get put into that position by the master. A continuous of laying down your life and picking up your cross Surrendering is the promotion. That's where the promotion comes in. That's how you go from glory to glory. And you can't handle that glory without the, the cutting away, the surrendering, the cutting away of flesh. You couldn't handle the greater glory. It's a step-by-step -step process. And thank God during the process. Don't look at it as, I'm not there yet. This sucks. Don't, don't do that. Say, I thank God I'm not in that place anymore. Look where I am today compared to where I was. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Adjust your attitude. You just want to go to the top. And you think you're all that. Have fun with that. <laughs> because you're going to go tumbling down again. I said it last week. Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> right? Yep. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. He thought, he just thought he was going to promote himself up there. Then Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. <laughs> it says pride comes before the fall. Surrender. In Christ, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a walk of faith. Um, we all have a testimony. I just shared a testimony with you of, of my darkest moments. Okay? And how I came out of those darkest moments. But that's not my only testimony. My testimony gets greater as I go along. And sometimes we stay in a certain place. You know, I used to be a drug addict. 
This, okay, this is Sally, right? I used to be a drug addict. I used to be, I, I, death was on my doorstep. I used to uh, be suicidal. I used to be all these things, right? And that's my only testimony. Okay, yes and amen. God saved me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you saved me. All right? But now I'm years down the road. If that's all that God did, and, and, not, and there was never anything else, no, you see, God's, God's, he's always doing something. That's what the glory to glory is. Tell me, tell me what God has done in your life today. Tell me what he's done yesterday. I've been sober for 35 years now. Thank you, Jesus. Yay. Next week. I've been sober for 35 years. Okay. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you that you took me out of addiction. Thank you. But there's so much more. I'm going to share a new testimony with you. What did the Lord do for me this week? What did I surrender and give up this week that brought me to a new place? I'm going to share a testimony with you. It's a little bit sensitive, but... So... There's, a, there's some things that I was struggling with, and I just got into my prayer closet. And I just started crying out to the Lord again, right? I do that whenever I come to a wall, or whenever I come to a, situ a valley I've never been in before, or a mountain I haven't climbed before, I go back into my prayer closet. And I cry out to Him like I cried out to Him when I thought I was physically dying, okay? I cry out because I want to get through this valley like I went through that valley. So I was crying out to him again. And he asked me to do something that was so, in my mind, was so difficult. So, I have a choice, right? I have a choice. Am I going to do that thing? Or am I going to go, no, Lord, that's too hard. Okay? Let me tell you this, too, before I go on. God doesn't give us more than we can handle. And he doesn't ask the mature to do or I should say, he doesn't ask the babies, the immature, to do what he asks the mature to do. So he'll, he won't give you more than you can handle. You see, when five, six years ago, he wasn't telling me to do things that he's telling me to do now. Okay? He knows all things. And he pushes us like a loving father pushes. So he he asked me, he didn't ask me, he told me to do something this week. And I, everything inside of me did not want to let that thing go. Because it was near and dear to me. Okay? It, you know, losing things in my life before was like, you know, it hurt when I lost things that I loved, right? It's like, I don't want to lose more. But see, those, those were things the devil was stealing and destroying from me. This was different. This was God saying, lay that thing down. 
lay that thing down and, and, and there will be a blessing on the other side of it. Do you remember when, when God asked God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son. Can you imagine his son that he wanted so badly that he finally got when he was a hundred years old? <laughs> and God says, sacrifice your son, Abraham. That's how I felt this week. Are you kidding me, God? You're, not, you're gonna <laughs> sorry. You're gonna take this away from me? Hey, I'm at a place in my life where I know that I know that everything he tells me to do is for my good. That I know that I know that it's gonna get greater. But I Abraham trusted God. He trusted God so much. Abraham knew the same thing I just told you. He knew and he trusted his God. And he took that child, that son that he wanted so badly and had waited so long for and and, and he was faithful because he trusts his trust God. And he, he took his son and he went to lay him on the altar. He didn't have anything, no idols before God, not even his son. And he laid him on the altar. He's yours, Lord. And God came in with a blessing. He provided the ram for a sacrifice instead of his son. A great blessing came out of that. A great blessing came out of that. He's the father of the nation. Father of the nations. And uh, so I had to lay down something that was so near and dear to me this week. I don't even know that I am far enough into it yet to know the great blessing that's going to come out of it. But I will tell you this, because it's got to be a testimony. There's got to be something good on the other side, right? Uh, without giving details of what it was that God asked me to do, I'm going to tell you this. I wonder if he wants me to tell <laughs> what it is. Maybe sometime down the line, I'll, I'll tell what it was. I don't know that I'm going to share it today. But it was three nights ago that he asked me to, to give up this thing. And I gave it up. And I'm going to tell you that three nights now, I have been without night terrors. I don't know if you know what night terrors are or if you've ever had them before in your life. Um, I don't know that I've ever had night terrors and I've had night terrors for over six months now. Every single night. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I gave up this thing And um, he says not to have any other idols before you. Uh, an idol is a stronghold. If there's something you cannot lay down, 
then it's an idol. Thou shalt not have any other gods before you. Will you lay that thing down? God sent his son to die on the cross. Okay? What will you lay down? What will you sacrifice? What will you give up to have, to go to that next level? Y'all want it. Y'all want it. Y'all talk about it. But you're not willing to die to yourself. And when you die to yourself, you gain. That's how you gain in Christ. I'm going to give you another testimony. Everybody going to love this one. <laughs> All you single people out there. <laughs> I got to a point in my life where I stopped controlling or looking for that somebody in my life. Every single relationship that I had <laughs> didn't work, okay? Not one of them ended well, went well. I got to a place where I gave up my will and I said, God, you have your way. What's the scripture? Uh, let no man separate what God has ordained. Let no man separate what God has ordained, right? So when God ordains a relationship, there's a blessing in it. Let no man separate. God has ordained. Yeah. There's another one I'm trying to think of right now. But um, see, you, you think of, go back, go back in the Bible. God brought people together. Okay, God brought people together, and and there was you know great and mighty things came out of that in the kingdom couples. Okay, not talking about the wicked couples because there was those two. There you know uh, Jezebel and. Ahab or whatever his name was, Ahab, I think. And um, but anyway, so I I did that. I finally laid it down. Like you know what? I have never been good at this. I'm not doing it anymore. And Lord, if you want me to be single for the rest of my life, I'll be single. Okay. Not too far on the other side of me surrendering that thing my way, God brought Pastor Danny. <laughs> and through him, um, it was, it was the best relationship that I had thus far. It was the greatest um, glory thus far. It was um, God used us as a kingdom couple um, to, to do great and mighty things in and through him. He, 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 he ordained that relationship and great things came out of it. And I want to say also that God used, because God uses people, right? He uses people to, to get his work done. He uses us as messengers. He uses us as workers. Okay? I am here to tell you that the things that the devil came to steal and destroy in my life, that God used Pastor Danny to return to me in abundance what the devil stole away. Yeah. 
I'm telling you, single people, it's worth it. It's worth letting God bring to you who he wants for you. It's worth letting God do the work in you before that person comes. Okay, I hear people all the time, where is he, where is she? Well, you need some work yet. You need some work, okay? You're going to get two broken, super duper broken people and put them together. Have fun with that. Okay? You need a little more work yet. So, but in the surrendering comes the promotion. In the surrendering comes the glory. And uh, to die is gain. And... I hope I got that point across mm -hmm. today. So, Lord God, we just thank you. We thank you that what you begin, you are faithful to complete. Thank you, Lord. Uh, teach us, though. Teach us to uh, get to the end of ourselves so that we lay it down like you laid down everything. You laid everything down on your whole life, Lord God. You laid it down for us. It's the finished work of the cross. Help us to get over ourselves and lay it down, Lord God. Help us to, to uh, digest the word. So that so we know the truth and the truth will set us free, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Help us, Lord, so it's no longer us that lives, but it's you that lives in us. That who we used to be should be unrecognizable. So when we walk in this world, the people that, used, that, that knew us know that they know that they know that only God can do that. And that when they look in, it provokes them to jealousy for you, Lord God. Yes. That they say, that they know that they're looking at a walking, talking miracle. Only God could have done that. And Lord God, I just pray that that, that is who we become. That is who we <laughs> aspire to what we aspire to so Lord the world can see you through your people help us Lord not to to uh, to look like the world anymore your children need to rise up <laughs> they need to obey you lord they need to listen so that we look different than the world so that they want you lord god so they know that there's a way and an answer and that when they look at your children they run to them because they know that they have something, that they have an answer. Help us, Lord, to lay it all down at your feet, on the altar. And anything that's in us that doesn't belong to you is just burned up. And the only and, and, and it's a, a fire that burns in us that's refining and purifying. 
so that we meet might be like gold. <laughs> gold. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you are so faithful to us and so loving and so patient. <laughs> so patient. <laughs> Some are a little slower than others. <laughs> So some of us are a little more special than others. <laughs> All right, I'm just having fun with you now. All right, have a good uh, holiday weekend. Have a good week and um, get in the Word. Know the Word of God. Get it into you, and you will just um, you'll get freer and you'll you'll get promoted. Come on, that's what you all want. Promotion, right? Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.